So guys, welcome back to the second part of shading and rendering on the first chapter. And we left off with this simple color blend here. Just for a quick reminder, pipe this in the surface and we will get the black and white map for the blend. So let's just for now get this a little bit softer here. So let's just get this value a little bit down and pipe it back and we can see we've got a little bit smoother transition here. So this is a harder transition and this is a softer transition. So something for now like that. And let's, let's lay this out here a little bit. So you can also make a base material. And this is the second layer material. Something like that. Let's make a simple layout here. And this will get piped in. Make them red. Make this one red. Something like that. So now we can play with uh, different um, materials. So for something like glass and this maybe plastic material, let's make it a little bit rougher here. And we will get some pretty cool examples. For some example, let's try gold and glass, that looks pretty cool. So we can switch them out for now, why not? So we will get gold and then glass, that looks pretty cool too. Tinted glass, ah, there's the... Let's, <laughs> let's get a milky coffee here. So this looks pretty cool too, something maybe like alien little bit of alien stuff here going on. That looks pretty nice too. You can change here. Ah, that was the wrong parameter. Let's get it back. Let's go here. Let's change some parameters. That just looks pretty, uh, yeah, like a subsurface scattering, so pretty organic in my opinion. Let's change this back to, let's get a paper look here. So with this paper look you can really create something like a medical um, kind of look in my opinion. So when we go here over to the to the rose color and make it not so saturated. Something like that and let's go down with the saturation here. To get something subtle and let's go here back to the paper and let's just pick. Get the same material here, let's copy it. Let's delete this material, get this down and pipe it back in. And now we can play here with the complementary. And we will get something like this, so pretty cool too. Or let's get a theatric look. Let's get an aluminium here and a gold here. Pretty cool too. 
let's just stay with that. And now guys, I will show you how you can make a quick uh, animation like this. You saw in the overview. So the cool thing is, you can just go here on the transform and select them both here. So let's get let's get another here. The cool thing is we can uh, get this null and pipe it in. And now we can get on the null. It's the controller for the camera. But we can also get a simple. Let's just freeze this for now, this geometry here. Freeze it so it stays in the always in the same position. And now let's get here with Alt, select these two parameters and make a keyframe. And let's just move the keyframe here with middle mouse click to one. And let's move this a little bit out here. And 120 maybe. Let's make new keyframes here. And let's go back just like so and we will get a nice smooth camera track. And the cool thing is you can now go to the rotation, go to motion effects and go to noise and a new window will pop up and will give you this panel. Now we are in motion operators, so in mobs. Let's go into the camera. Now you can already see we will get this heavily camera wiggle. But let's go down with the roughness. Let's get a little bit down in the exponent. Let's get the periods not so much. So this is just like a frequency. And the amplitude a little bit down here. And now we can see we've got a little wiggle here. And it's not bad. And you can for sure play with the with the settings. And of course with the noise, so <laughs> random noise. Random is just like oh no, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so let's get here with the hammer noise. Let's get the roughness way down. And you can play with them and you can get really cool small camera wiggles in your camera track. Just play with the noises, play especially here with the parodic, so make maybe one just a little of movement will help you improve your camera and play with that. So for now we will go back here, delete this, delete this and delete the channels. And when you set your motion effects up and the null position you can go here and then you just need here render frame range and here under the, I under the output to your path $f4 for the frame, for the current frame. And that's it. You can get it out as a EXR, TIFF, J JPEG, but we will go over this later in another chapter and even over a little compositing. So for now, just go back here and we will get another one here. So let's get this one here. So let's get a full range here maybe, something like that. I just reload the Redshift viewer here. So there is it. <coughs> let's just reload it get a little bit bigger here. Uh, 
and for now we need maybe we need a wrangle maybe not let's just place the the focus position down maybe i hit a pixel maybe not i never will know Oh, we hit a pixel. Nice, but I think this this is the backside. Yeah. So now let's just place uh, a little triangle here, and let's check the resample. Unlock the camera. Let's I feel a little bit inside. Check the resample. Yeah, the resample is way too high. So let's get it down to something like this. Uh, let's get a little bit lower. Something like 0 0.05. Let's get attribute wrangle here for the p-scale let's activate the curve view let's dive up and let's get here to our cam let's select the cam and yeah the focus point was on the back side so let's move it here to the front let's go into the camera let's lock the camera for now and let's start up the render view again so guys, welcome back. I just fired it up the render view and now it's there. So already looking pretty cool in my opinion, but we can always go further. So let's just move that to the side here. And I just added here views and disabled the attribute wrangle. Caused a little bit of problems. Let's just for now get here transform and let's uh, rotate this thing a little bit. So let's move the centroid to the origin again with this function. Just type it into pivot translate centroid zero brackets open zero comma zero brackets closed zero one and zero two. And let's rotate this a little bit here. Let's have a look. Maybe a little bit further. Yeah, that looks cool. And now let's go into the RD camera and let's get a little bit more depth of field. So 0 0.15 maybe. Let's just get our data channel back here and let's have a look how that looks. Let's press Q to refresh the IPR. Get something like this. Did I enable the curfew? Yes, okay. But we forgot the color here, so let's get a color also here. Let's cut it. Let's do it in here, and now we can see. Let's just look, have a look at here at the curve view. Okay, good. So let's remap this again, so 0 to 1. Let's fire up the render view again get something like this and the cool thing is just pipe our material inside of here and we'll get this really cool looking rendering so let's just for now get to the rack again and hit the button zero to make a bucket rendering and let's have here a little quick look let's wait a little bit and we can already see the details the lines and behind the lines the smooth bokeh so the depth of field looking pretty good Let's just make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Press F to send out the window. And yeah. That looks pretty cool in my opinion.
so for now let's close it and let's get back on the last one so that was the the plate with the lines let's have a look what we can make with this hmm what we can make with this so let's get here the resample and the fuse for now and the color so we get the curfew let's get a resample here and uh, let's just get I just want the plate here for now That's what I want. Just relaxing the points now and recook. So that's cool. So let's get this one here and let's pipe. Oh, we don't need a fuse, but we need the color here. And pipe this out and let's get into the RNG camera and let's get a nice view on the lines so let's get a fuse because some points are floating here outside so let's fuse them just together and let's get a camera here let's get a good angle something like that let's unlock the camera Let's have a look at here at the focus point. So just press, whoops, press one, two, three, four, and five to switch between the windows. Let's go with with this perspective view here. Let's get a camera here. Let's get here the gimbal. And let's move the focus point right to the surface something like that and let's fire up the render view let's go to rack let's make live rendering enabled and for now let's get this no this is cylinder let's reload it make the window a little bit smaller here and let's could go to the fixed scaling so it renders a little bit faster looks pretty cool let's get here let's get a normal material on top of it let's get a ramp inside of here diffuse color looks not bad Looks not bad. Let's get this shadow back here and let's change something. Let's go to uh, not the tinted glass to normal glass and let's make here a simple custom material. Let's make it dark. Let's get the roughness to 0 0.25 and the Fresnel time to color and edge tint. Let's make this a little bit brighter and let's get something like this. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Let's get to the original size. Let's switch to record 709, 709, and we will get something like this. So, not bad. That's for the first chapter, guys. 
try to play with materials and light. That's pretty important. And of course with the shapes. So you will get for sure the hip file. And you can go over the simple free solutions here for the lines. I really like the first one here. Pretty simple, pretty smooth. And in the camera it's just, yeah, pretty cool. And then you can play with the shapes of the lines. Go with bend modifiers and so on and so on. And that's it for the first chapter, the lines, and I will see you in the next chapter.